Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is your host Ben on the Lover of Tech channel. Now, as you know, Google announced the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL, and I've got them on hands right now. And I'm going to be able to give you my first initial hands on impressions of the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. So, without further ado, I'm your host Ben again. Roll the intro. Let's take a look at what Google has to offer for both these flagships for the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. If we're first looking at the Pixel 2, the Pixel 2 has your traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio with a 5 inch corner to corner display measurement where you're using an AMOLED display panel with a 1920 by 1080p display resolution while the Pixel 2 is supporting the much newer 18 by 9 aspect ratio with a corner to corner 6 inch measurement with a quad high definition plus resolution of 2880 by 1440 using a POLED display. Both these phones now using the always on display technology with the OLED panel as a software feature that's built in which really brings forward nice little features where it comes to notifications where you can see on the screen without the screen being on which is really awesome to see and also for the design both phones are now using front facing stereo speakers which is really awesome and it's going to help with a nicer multimedia experience when it comes to videos and music when you're using the loudspeakers which is going to make it so much easier to use so you don't actually muffle your loudspeaker audio which is great to see well done google over to the frame and the rear of both phones, you have a glass and aluminium design with a slimmer frame which gives a much nicer, more comfortable feel in the hand. The aluminium takes more of the rear of the phone where you now have the fingerprint scanner that sits in the metal part of the phone compared to the glass of last year's Pixel where the glass material houses the camera lens and the LED flash. Now the overall design of the phone definitely has moved forward, it's been polished up, you have much more comfortability in terms of when you're using the phone in your hand, which is really awesome to see how they've polished it up. Although it's not anything as flashy and outstanding as what all the other competition are doing from places like Samsung, Xiaomi and LG, it's really great to see that they have refined and polished up all the things that were on the Pixel last year, giving you a much slimmer frame. The aluminium powder design is definitely a lot more comfortable now hand without a case which is really awesome to see for me i'm definitely leaning more towards the pixel 2 xl design especially for the newer 18 by 9 aspect ratio design for the display for the front with the front facing speakers whereas the normal pixel 2 the front frame and bezels are still a lot bigger in person when you look at them with the traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio where looking at it i wish Google definitely went with the 18 by 9 aspect ratio for the smaller phone because it does really feel nice and comfortable in the hand. But overall, these are the two designs and I'm leaning more towards the Pixel 2 XL, which is most likely the one I'm going to get when I have my retail model for review purposes. If we take a look at the internal specifications of both these handsets, both are exactly identical for the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. And it's what you expect from a 2017 flagship Android phone. What you have is the Snapdragon 835 CPU with the Adreno 540 GPU, 4 gigabytes of RAM, You've got the 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabyte internal storage with no SD card support. With the Pixel 2 supporting a 2700 milliamp hour battery capacity and the Pixel 2 XL supporting a 3520 milliamp hour battery, both supporting fast charging enabled over USB Type C. You also now officially have water and dust resistance rating of ingress protection IP68, which is great and awesome to see for durability when you're using it in the rain or any splashes or any dust that you might actually suffer to damage for the phone. You do have this rating now, but this time around compared to last year's Pixel, the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL no longer have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, meaning that USB type C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter or Bluetooth wireless earbuds will be the way to go for your audio experience as well as being able to charge the phone at the same time. So it's going to be interesting to see when I grab these phones as my retail model, how I actually experience using a phone without a headphone port. Moving over to the software experience version, this time around is Android Oreo 8.0, which is the absolute latest from Google. And this is the advantage that you have with going for Pixel device, where you have the absolute latest clean software experience from Android. And it's really, really good to see that we have it all here with the latest features that come with Android 8.0. We've also got some nice Google Pixel 2 exclusive features where you've got new live wallpapers, where the wallpapers actually move slightly where everything else still is the same and also google have added a new hardware feature called active edge where you can squeeze the frame of the phone to launch the google assistant 
And this is for sure the same hardware tech that you find at the HTC U11 from this year from HTC. But this time you're only limited to launching the Google Assistant. You can't remap it. So this is something that's gonna be very interesting to see how people respond to it, especially when I also get my retail model. And you can also set different levels of pressure for Squeeze to launch the Assistant. So you do have a much quicker way to launch the Google Assistant by squeezing the phone, which is gonna be very interesting to see how people use it and respond to it. But this was definitely seen with the HTC U11 with more flexibility there. But you're only limited to the Google Assistant on the new Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. Now with Google, with the Pixel last year being announced and people having amazing experiences as one of the best cameras on a smartphone, I didn't unfortunately get to use the Pixel last year to actually judge what the camera experience was there. But I'm trusting from all the reviews from all the other tech YouTubers and the user experience database that the Pixel definitely had one of the best cameras on the market which was quite impressive but there has been improvements to the new pixel 2 the pixel 2 xl camera which is exactly the same for the rear and the front which is really awesome to see no matter which one you buy they're going to get the same camera experience but let's run over what these cameras are actually bring to the table the rear camera has a new 12.2 megapixel lens with an f1.8 aperture now with optical image stabilization which is new this year compared to last year and with the addition of optical image stabilization, Google are gonna be actually working with this and electronic image stabilization where they're now actually calling it Fuse Video Stabilization, which is gonna give you an even more stable shot working with Google software, hardware, and artificial intelligence to be able to map your video, whether in 4K or 1080p or slow motion to give you a much more stable shot, which is gonna be very, very interesting to see because last year, Google not having optical image stabilization were able to create some nice stabilization without OA on their videos even in 4k which was absolutely awesome to see but this time round as well with the optical image stabilization and the new f1.8 aperture lens it's going to be really good for long exposure and better low light performance but this is definitely going to have to be tested once i have the retail model and we have more control to see how this camera performs but i'm definitely eager to see what these cameras are going to bring to the table especially with the dxo mark of 98 whatever that counts for if you actually value what the exo mark are actually counting for this camera to be as good as it is for this year but we're definitely gonna have to get hands on with it and see how this camera performs you have a 1.4 micron pixel size for the rear camera dual led flash and also support for dual pixel af technology with 4k video recording and also one of the freakiest things that google have actually tried to pull off this year is portrait mode with a single camera lens using google's hardware software and mainly ai artificial intelligence to be able to map information to give you bokeh and background depth of field effects with a single camera lens the front facing camera has an 8 megapixel lens with an f2.4 aperture 1.4 micron pixel size and 1080p video recording as well as portrait mode again working with google software and ai to give you background depth of field and background blur but these particular models that i had with hands-on didn't seem to have it enabled so i wasn't actually able to get some front facing portrait mode pictures but these were non-retail models so i'm sure once i have the retail models i'm going to be able to take these front facing portrait mode depth of field pictures which is going to be really awesome to see how that process is so with my brief use of the camera these are some of the sample shots that i took with just the photos of the rear and the front facing selfie and also with the rear which was the only one that was working with portrait mode with the handset that i had this was some of the results that i got with the background depth of field bokeh which the processing time was a little bit slow but it wasn't necessarily slow where you didn't have to wait for so long for it to process it was actually quite quick but i was just more amazed at the fact that the edge detection was so good even on this non-retail model it was absolutely phenomenal what google are doing with a single camera lens which honestly like even with ai and software as an explanation i still think this is witchcraft i don't know how google are doing it and i cannot wait to get my hands on with the full retail model to actually really test how consistently good the background depth of fill for portrait bokeh actually works with the single lens but so far it's looking really good and i'm really really impressed now overall that sums up my very very quick hands-on brief use of the pixel 2 and the pixel 2 xl with google's approach to hardware software and ai for this year the pixel 2 and the pixel 2 xl 
are phones that I'm excited to get hands on with this year to see how they perform. My overall impressions are that I'm most likely going to get the Pixel 2 XL for the display and the design. The fingerprint scanner works really, really fast. The lack of a headphone jack is definitely a painful loss. The new camera is based on photos and a portrait mode with the single lens is complete witchcraft. Like I've been saying from before, works really, really well, looks really, really sharp. I cannot wait to get my retail model to fully test it to see how this phone performs, if it's gonna be one of the phones of the year, but definitely anything that's coming from Google that's given a clean stock Android latest experience is definitely gonna be something to take a look at to see how it actually overall performs. But these phones initially definitely do feel nice in hand. I'm definitely more leaning towards the Pixel 2 XL. That's it for me. That's my quick brief hands-on with both the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. Make sure you follow all my social media presence on my Twitter account, my Facebook account, my Instagram, and my Snapchat to see all the behind the scenes things that are happening on the Lover of Tech channel. Make sure you subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you're part of the notification squad so you can see all the latest content that is posted on the Lover of Tech channel. Again, I'm your host, Ben, signing out, and I will see you next time.